Hello, my name is Mark Syme. I'm the minister of the Northfield Church of Christ in Northfield, New Jersey. I would like to welcome you to our evening services for Sunday, August the 27th. We will sing a few songs, observe the Lord's Supper, and I have a message for you that I hope will be of some value, pardon the pun, yeah, in what the lesson is going to be about. Uh, we sing at Northfield from Songs of Faith and Praise. Uh, I will give you the number and the name of the song uh, in case you have a different book or you need to Google the song if you want to sing along with us. And I will make sure that you have the name of the song. So let's get started with number 202, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. Wonderful, wonderful music written by Ludwig von Beethoven. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee. <clears throat> joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before thee, opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. All thy works with joy surround thee, earth and heaven reflect thy rays. Stars and angels sing around thee, center of unbroken praise. Field and forest, vale and mountain, flowery meadow, flashing sea. Chanting bird and flowing fountain, call us to rejoice in thee. Thou art giving and forgiving, ever blessing, ever blessed. Wellspring of the joy of living, ocean depth of happy rest. Heaven, Mother, Christ our Brother, all who live in love are thine. Teach us how to love each other, lift us to the joy divine. Mortals join the mighty chorus which the morning stars began. Father, love is reigning o'er us. Brother, love binds man to man. Ever singing, march we onward, victors in the midst of strife. Joyful music leads us sunward in the triumph song of life. Please turn to number 77. 77, the title of this song is Glorify Thy Name. Glorify Thy Name, number 77. <clears throat> oh. 
Father, we love you, we worship and adore you. Glorify thy name in all the earth. Glorify thy name. Glorify thy name. Glorify thy name in all the earth. Jesus, we love you, we worship and adore you. Glorify thy name in all the earth. Glorify thy name. Glorify thy name. Glorify thy name in all the earth. Spirit, we love you. We worship and adore you. Glorify thy name in all the earth. Glorify thy name. Glorify thy name. Glorify thy name in all the earth. And before the Lord's Supper, we will sing number 359. I love the Lord. Let's sing the three verses and save the course for last. 359, I love the Lord. First three verses and then the chorus. <clears throat> I love the Lord, for he died my soul to save. On Calvary, his dear life he freely gave. From realms above, Jesus freely came to die. That I might live someday with him on high. I love the Lord, for he saved the lost from sin. He gave them life to be whole and free again. To live on high with him never more to die. Oh, praise his name. We'll see him by and by. I love the Lord for his love so full and free. He taught us why that our love like his should be. To be like him and compassion freely give. Oh, bless his name, we then with him could live. I love the Lord, he has been so good to me. He gave his life from sin to set me free. No greater love than his could ever be. I love the Lord because he first loved me. This is uh, the part of our service where we gather about the Lord's table in communion. Why? Uh, the 
first words of the song that we just sang is, I love the Lord for he died my soul to save. That's what God's all wondrous plan was all about. That while we were yet sinners, uh, God sent Jesus to us in the form of man. And as in the form of man, uh, Jesus experienced what humans experienced so he could be our brother along with our savior. He could be the uh, son of man along with being the son of God. And then came the ultimate, the ultimate sacrifice. The old covenant would be uh, done away with and the new covenant would form. This covenant was wrapped around not the sacrifice of animals, but wrapped around the sacrifice of the Son of God. And so as we gather about the table, uh, we remember uh, the ultimate sacrifice that Jesus made, that he gave up his life that we might live, that he gave up his life that we might have forgiveness of sins, that he gave up his life that we could live eternally with him. So as we partake of these emblems, the bread representing his body, the fruit of the vine representing his blood, let's go back to Calvary and let's go back to the sacrifice that Jesus uh, uh, experienced mm -hmm. for each one of us. Let's play, pray for the bread. Our Heavenly Father, we're grateful that uh, Jesus came to earth we're just so grateful for his teachings. We're so grateful for the sinless life that he led. But at this time, we're so grateful that he was willing to give up his life that we might live. As we partake of the bread, let's remember the pain that Jesus suffered as he hung upon the cross, that his body was given in our stead. So as we partake of the bread, Let's keep that in mind. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. Let's pray for the fruit of the vine. We are so grateful that Jesus was willing to shed his life-giving blood. And as the life ebbed from his body, the blood that he shed means so much for us. It is the blood of the new covenant. It is the blood of forgiveness. It is the blood that washes away our sins. As we partake, help us to remember the significance of the sacrifice and the blood that Jesus shed. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. With the Lord's Supper being completed, we think now of something else that we're supposed to do on the first day of the week as chronicled in 1 Corinthians chapter 16. And that is to lay by in store and give back to the Lord. Uh, that with which we have been prospered. Help us to be the cheerful givers that we are instructed to be. Help us to understand that um, we give back to the Lord what is indeed his. Help us to understand that we came into this world with nothing, we will leave with nothing. What is important to us is the spiritual part of us that we leave with. But while we're here on earth, we have a duty in the kingdom of the Lord, and that is to bring others to Christ, uh, to bring uh, help to those that are in need. Uh, let's pray as we give. Our Heavenly Father, we're grateful that we have both the opportunity and the desire to give back to you. Help us to remember all the examples of New Testament giving right at the very beginning as the church started, that people sold what they had of their goods and laid the money at the feet of the apostles. 
We don't have the feet of the apostles anymore, but we give back to the church, which Jesus died for. And as we give back, help us to understand that we give back with the intention that uh, the work of the kingdom of uh, Jesus here on earth uh, would be fulfilled, that others would be brought to him. Help those that use these monies to use them wisely so that they would serve their intended use. Bless us in our giving. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. <clears throat> the last song that we will sing is Bind Us Together. It is number 704. 704. Bind Us Together. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together with love. There is only one God, there is only one King. There is only one body, that is why we can sing. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together with love. That concludes the singing part of our service. I hope you enjoyed giving praise to the Lord as much as I did. If you were there this morning, uh, you heard that uh, the title of the lesson this evening is You Are Valued. You are valued. Um, sometime in the uh, 1600s, an interesting discovery was made. This uh, stunning 45.52 diamond, carat diamond, uh, was discovered. It has been labeled as the Hope Diamond, and it was sold for as... Uh, much as I forget what it was, uh, uh, some millions and millions and millions of dollars changed hands many times. And now fortunately is in the uh, Smithsonian Institute. So we can view the Hope Diamond. What does value mean to us? Let me get into an arena that I know about. So if I bore you a little bit, you know I'm a sports fan. You know I'm a, a baseball fan. At one time, the 1909 T206 Honus Wagner card was the holy grail of baseball cards. It was a little bitty little card. They were sold in uh, packages of cigarettes. Uh, recently, uh, the Honus Wagner card was sold one little piece of card, this big, for $6.6 .6 million. And we looked at that and we said, boy, that's pretty amazing, but I could go that one better. Many of you probably don't know who Honus Wagner was, but everybody has heard of Mickey Mantle. Mickey Mantle's rookie card, that means the first year he played baseball, was 1952. The card company was called Topps. And um, goodness knows, I may have had that card in my hand at one time or another. I was uh, seven years old at the time, and I was just kind of getting into uh, baseball cards. Just recently, a mint condition, that means almost flawless, 1952 Mickey Mantle card sold for $12.6 million. Now, we might beg the question, why are these things worth so much to people? Well, it's because we live kind of in an economic world. 
where value of things is rather important. And so the value of these things uh, kind of ebb and flow with the times. And so with that in mind, we find ourselves being controlled by various aspects of our life. However, once we devote our lives to God, our value increases. <laughs> our value becomes almost transcendent. It reaches heights that otherwise would be impossible by human standards. You see, in the terms of those valuable baseball cards, they have to be in very, very good condition to be worth money. You might have a card uh, of someone with a famous name, but if the corners are uh, curved and there's some, some kind of uh, mar on the card, the card doesn't have the mint value. And that's what, that's the terminology, mint value. When we become children of God, we become of mint value the highest possible value that a person can have. And so with that in mind, I would like to just look this evening at a couple of aspects of value, of our value. In Exodus chapter 19, verses 5 to 6, Exodus 19 five to six, we notice at this time Moses was on Mount Sinai and he went up into the mountain. And in verse five, it says, now then, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, these are the words of God to Moses, then you shall be my possession among all the peoples for all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests, a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the sons of Israel. God said to Moses, let the people know how valuable they are to me. Of all the peoples on the earth, God chose this group of people to be his. He, he observed, literally observed the expanse of the world and all the people. And he found delight in mankind, namely on those that were devoted to him. And so what we find in the history of the Israelite people is that they served one God. Now understand that they had their warts and they had their blemishes. But with that, they did not worship the idols that the people around them worshipped. Why? Well, I think number one on my list as far as our value is concerned is that to God, our value is unique. Just as the Hope Diamond was unique because of its size and its clarity, um, it, it was a one of a kind. Well, God looked at the children of Israel and said, you're one of a kind and you are going to be my people and I am going to be your God. And so to each of us, because as Christians, when we become children of God, 
our value becomes even more unique. And so, why is that so? Well, if we turn to the New Testament, words from uh, written by the Holy Spirit-inspired Apostle Paul, if we turn to Ephesians, the first chapter, and the 14th verse, he said, You were sealed in him with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is given as a pledge of our inheritance with view to the redemption of God's own possession. That made us of value. We were divinely evaluated. You know what? Um, when we look at things here on the earth that are uh, of value, they are of value because there are people that critique them to determine their value. There are companies that determine the value of everything from baseball cards to beanie babies, for goodness sake. I remember when Pokemon cards were of great, great value. There are these things that have had kind of temporary value in the Lord, but what, uh, in, in the world, but they were determined by somebody. Somebody made that determination. The thing that makes you and I unique as Christians is that we have been divinely evaluated by God. What can be understood here in Ephesians chapter 1 is the mutual inheritance between man and God. When we become Christians, we gain something. We gain value. We gain a loving, kind, holy, and good God who will shepherd us. We become his sheep. That's what Jesus called himself. Jesus was the good shepherd. And God, in turn, gains a people as an inheritance for eternal life, which means God gains a people if they live godly lives that will get to live with him eternally, that original creation that God made in, in forming man. God values us so much that as we observed in the Lord's Supper, that while we weren't doing so well, while we were sinners, God sent Jesus to us. He, he extended a member of the Godhead to take a human form and dwell among people. And this divinity, this Jesus Christ, who was Son of Man and Son of God, taught these rich lessons to people and then ultimately gave him up, gave himself up as a sacrifice. Lastly, um, our value and how we are valued is transformational. It's transformational. Let's look at some words from the Apostle Peter. In 1 Peter chapter 2.10, he says, You once were not a people, but now you are the people of God. You had not received mercy. Now you have received mercy. Peter is talking about the transformational thing that happens to us when we become children of God. We transform from people of the world to people of God. 
And he called us from our sinful life to a life of purity, to a life of godly living. Therefore, in that same context, Peter says, you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession. You are his, he is yours. Hmm. Amazing words, aren't they? What does this do? Uh, have you ever, any of you ever restored a piece of furniture and try to get it back to its original condition? What happens to us is, as people, is that we get refurbished. We just change from mortal people to immortality. The idea of life and living is now in our minds. And with that, we become people of value. God values us. And so the value that God has for us is unique, just as he valued the children of Israel. It's divinely determined. God makes the call. He takes a look at us and says, you were sealed. And finally, our value is transitional as we change from people of the world to people of God. And we become God's chosen people. We become a royal priesthood and a holy nation. How does that happen? It happens when we make the decision in our hearts to become children of God. You see, he wants us to be valuable to him. To be valuable, we live Christian lives. We show the example that God showed us as to how to live a life of purity and righteousness. The only way that we can do that is by taking Jesus Christ into our life, by becoming children of God through Jesus Christ. We do this through understanding what the Word of God says and then confessing Jesus as the Son of God, repenting of the way we used to live because we want to have value to the Lord and we can have value if we are still in the world. And finally, being baptized for the remission of our sins, not the removal of dirt, but the changing life-giving waters of baptism. And so if you're here this evening and you haven't taken Jesus into your life, you're not as valuable to him as to God as we can be. The only way that we can have that value is by being his children. If you need to come tonight, we offer you the invitation. If you need to do it immediately, please be in touch with one of us and we will be there for you. Hope this lesson was beneficial to all of us. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we're so blessed to have you as our God and Jesus as our Savior. Help us to understand that uh, we are your people when we take you into our lives through Jesus Christ. Help us to be the godly people that you have caused us to be. Help us to be your chosen people. Bless us as we uh, go through our Christian walk that we might ever remember that Jesus told us that we are to be the light of the world and the salt of the earth. Bless us as we reach for that in our lives. Comfort us when we need comforting. Forgive us when we need forgiving. We pray this in your son's most holy name. Amen. Please be safe, and may God bless you all. In heavenly armor we'll enter the land, the battle belongs to the Lord. No weapon that's fashioned.